My guy over here. Oh, they both have the kings and queens. Good job, guys. Senior Kelly. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Good luck to you. Thank you. I need it. We're back. <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks since my last solid game of poker, so I've been itching to hang out and play this game we all know and love. So I decided to make my way back to Steubenville, about 45 minutes west of Pittsburgh and across the state line in Ohio, and hang out with some of my new friends at the Viking Social Club. We pick up the action here as I'm holding on to King Five Hearts and decide to gamble a little bit. Folds go around to the button, who also limps in. Small blind completes, big blind checks his option. So we go four ways to the flop of King Queen Seven Rainbow. I've somehow managed to flop top pair. So I lead out for 800, and only the big blind calls. The turn? It's the Ace of Clubs. Now, this card favors my range way better than the big blind, so when he checks, I bet 2k to take down the pot. Easy game. A couple more hands go by, and I look down at King Jack Offsuit in middle position. Our under-the-gun player had already limped in for four, so I try and thin the herd and bump up the price of poker to 1600 Small blind calls, everyone folds, we go heads up to a flop of ace-king five all clubs. Now this is a fairly decent flop for my hand, especially since I've got pretty good board coverage here with middle pair, both straight and flush redraw possibilities. Let's see how we'll play this one. Well, apparently, the small blind had already checked in the dark and both the dealer and I missed that move, so I give a little panic check and we head off to a turn, which is absolutely no help. Again, we go check check, so I have no oh, I, clue I, I what this guy's up to, yeah, Sorry, but I'm pretty sure I'll know after this river because it's my bailout card. It's the Queen of Clubs. That's right, the nut flush in position. Does it get better than that, right? Well. That's when our buddy from the bird decides this card was better for him than me, and maybe he flopped that flush. I was hoping I was betting Ace King of Swords, especially since we both checked the turn. So he leads out for 2300. Then I take a gander at my whole cards once again to make sure I didn't misread them and make a river raise to 14,000. Well, that did little to sway our villainous small blind as he makes the call, and I announce that I have the nuts. I got the nuts. He turns over the clean diaper for a losing baby straight doo 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 doo. So, a uh, quick hand breakdown. So, my guy over here, they both have the kings and queens. Good job, guys. Easy game. <laughs> The big blind now has to pay the ante, and for this hand, well, that's gonna be me. Under the gun plus one, low jack and high jack, they all call, the cutoff button and small blind all fold back to me because they know I've got the red tens. And since I'm out of position here, I'm gonna do my absolute best to boot these limpers out and take down a small but reasonable size pot. So I'm thinking a raise to 16,000 ought to do the trick. And I was right. Easy game. Well, here we are on our first break. Um, pretty good round, uh, except for the one hand that I'm going to post right up here. Um, I think we got our river rat. Um, I had pocket sevens. It looked good. He hits the ace on the river, so I think he has a deal with Barry Greenstein. Not sure. But um, hey, while you're here, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It sure helps the channel out a lot. Blinds are now up to $1,000, $2,000 with a $2,000 ante. I'm in the low jack looking down at the Jiggities. Our middle position player, he limps in for 2 k and knowing this fellow has been fairly active for much of the game, there's no way he stays in for cheap. So I make a sizable raise to 15 k Folds go around to the button. He decides to smooth call, everyone else folds. Now with this overbet I just laid down, his call pretty much narrows his range to some premium holding like ace-king, ace-queen suited, maybe a low to middle pair. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a higher pair That's than jacks, there. else he probably three bets to try to get the chips into the middle. Still, he is in position, so anything is possible. We go heads up to a flop of 4 4 10, couple of clubs. I gotta say, oh thank god, no ace. So I lead out for 22k and our butt snap folds. I gladly show my hand and announce easy game. 
A few more hands are played at this level. We lost a player at the table waiting to rebalance, which puts me in the hijack position, watching as both the under the gun plus one and middle position players limp in. I find a couple of suited Broadway cards. And since this hand plays fairly decent post flaw, this time I decide to follow the crowd and smooth call as well. Both the cutoff and button, well, they make discipline folds. The small blind completes, the big blind checks his option, and we go five ways to a flop of Jack, Four, Six, Couple of Diamonds. Now the small blind decides this is the flop he's gonna shove his decimated stack for 3,500. He just lost most of his stack earlier with Ace King. And the big blind pauses briefly. He decides to flat, as does the end of the gun plus one and middle position players. With all this action and top pair, not to mention this flush draw staring back at me, I implement super aggro mode and put every last one of my chips to work. Well, that was enough for the big blind. He quickly folds the under the gun player. He didn't have too many chips left, so he slides his stack in for less, which prompts our middle position player to consider his move. Please don't call, please don't call, please don't call. <coughs> he called. And when the four hands were tabled, we see that we currently have the best hand. Small blind had king five, not really sure what that connected with. Under the gun plus one, pocket nines, questionable shove. Middle position, ace ten of diamonds for the nut flush draw. And me, the hero, <laughs> just top hair. Not dead, but not good either. And after the pots were made good, the dealer delivers the queen of spades on the turn. And the ace of spades shows up to bury my hopes of surviving this one on the river. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you our newest river rat inductee, Mr. Barry Greenstein, wannabe man. And while our dealer works to figure out the stack counts here, the dealer across the way gives me my consolation prize. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> um. And after that beat, I work to rebuild my stack for a bit and find myself in the big blind holding on to a pretty decent hand. It's the ace-queen off suit. Folds go around to the hijack player. He decides it's time to bring on inflation to the game and tosses out 20k in chips, which gave our cutoff a solid reason to call. And then our button, who'd not played a single hand in nearly an hour, fires his remaining 55,000 into the middle. I have to tell you. What I'm about to do may appear to be questionable, but in game it seemed like the correct move, as I was certain Ace Queen Offsuit was no good here. I make a somewhat questionable fold, and the original Razor puts all his chips in the middle, roughly 95,000. This gives our cutoff a moment of pause, then he reluctantly folds as well. And when the hands are tabled, our hijack player shows pocket tens. Our button, well, he's shoved with Queen Seven of Hearts. And here's the actual run out. I pulled an ace queen there, by the way. You're welcome. <laughs> he said, he says thank you. I said, you're welcome. There <laughs> We pick up the action post-flop of 10 4, 4 a couple of clubs. There's been plenty of betting prior to this, and I've been successful at booting all but the player in middle position and our big blind from the pot. We see here that I checked my king-10 off suit after the turn deuce of hearts, as did the other two players. And while the rest of the table seems more excited about the pitching during the Pirates game, the river comes an inconsequential five of diamonds. So I toss out another 10K, but this time, our villain river raises to 55,000. And that certainly solidifies he likes those sailboats in the middle. 50 cents worth of free advice here? Never trust the smirk of a man who raises you in position like that. Just fold that top pair, move it right along. For this hand, I'm on the button with a playable pocket pair, and since the middle position player had already put his stack in the middle, I decided to isolate with my own all-in to ensure both blinds were not encouraged to come along. All in. We both table our hands, and our villain knows he has to win his ace-king flip if he's going to stick around for the rest of this match. Well, sir, the flop was more favorable for him as it comes a couple of clubs with a pair of tents. The fight. turn, no help, nine of diamonds, but the river, well, 
You know it was good for him. The dealer delivered the eight of clubs, giving our villain the river flush. And me? Well, let's just say I get a little more disappointment, plus the knowledge to know that I've got some more work to do. You know, it's always fun to have a super fan seated at your table, like Joe from New Martinsville, West Virginia. We caught up with him earlier. This is what he had to say. So I'm here with Joe. Joe, where are you from? New Martinsville. Martinsville. So I hear, I heard a little uh, birdie tell me you you're a fan. I am a fan. Yes. Oh yeah. So are you gonna um, try to be the river rat tonight? I'm playing cash. Oh well, maybe we'll come over and check it out. Yes. Yes. Good luck. Hey, thanks, cash. brother. You're welcome. So with that, Joe decided to hop into the tournament and wasted little time jumping in with his all-in when I find Ace-King offsuit. Now the player just to his left and to my right, he must have been holding on to some sort of primo hand as he asked the dealer for a count of Joe's stack. He's got 27k. So I make a double take of my holdings and I make sure that I'm going to be able to isolate with my own all-in and our villain decides to make the call. Now this seemingly makes Joe pretty happy and puts our middle villain in the tank. And after a few ruffles of his chips, he decides his holding's not worth the risk and tosses his cards into the muck. Joe and I are now heads up and we see that he made his move with what I learned later was his favorite shoving hand, Queen Ten of Hearts. Joe shouts to the poker gods and the dealer doesn't deliver the hearts, but he does give Joe a river straight, earning him accolades as our latest river rat inductee. And this is not the last award Joe will earn tonight. And with my stack where we started this tournament, I know I need to make a move soon, else I may be left behind. Really behind. So when I find Ace-8 in middle position, I think I overplayed it a bit as I shoved all in once Joe raises to 8k under the gun. The button, who seemingly doesn't want to play anymore, he shoves for 85,000, which runs out the blinds and Joe. And when we table our hands, I now see why he overshoved. He's got the Cowboys, leaving me to hope the Ace Magnets will favor my hand. All right, guys. Good playing with y'all. No dice. We learned that another player had mucked his pocket fives, and we see this run out. So I make my exit and give a good luck tap to our new friend Joe. And it seems to have worked because 30 minutes later, we snap this picture of him collecting his final winnings on the night. Well, we may have found some run good early on, but in the end, it would be our new friend Joe who wins on the night. We'll just have to wait till next week as we make our way back to the reserve and try to grab our share of 40k in a day. Here's a sneak peek at what's to come. When I have pocket threes, I made a pretty substantial pre-flop raise to about 16,000. So come on back next Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central for even more poker shenanigans just like what you find over here. As always, play smart, play with heart, and always have fun. This is Marty, and you've been watching Reflections of a River Rat.